Hi guys, if you all are back from the lunch break, please put your hand raise. I request those who are back from the lunch break, please give a hand raise.
Hello, everyone. I'm back. I hope you all are there with me. Thank you for the response. All of you, please respond. If you all are there with me, please raise your hand or type yes in chat box. So guys, we have already uh, discussed or we have taken the overview of Microsoft Power Platform and now it's time to cover up the labs. So I want you all to be there with me so that you all can become the part of lab. So please quickly respond me. Okay, I got reply from three people only. Shripati, Rahul, and Himanshu. I think Shri Devi, you are also there. What about other? Guys, please respond. Only four response are there. Okay, five, six. Please come back, everyone. Uh, Chitali, are you there? Uh, you wanted to discuss something with participants? Yeah, yeah. I have to. I have to explain them the steps to get the achievement badge for PL two hundred. So let me share my screen first. Okay. I hope my screen is visible to all. Okay, so uh, there is the achievement badge for PL 200. For that, you have to follow certain steps. I have mentioned that steps in the chat box too. First, you have to go to the Microsoft Learn site. As, it, as there has been mentioned in this uh, PPT, you can see over here. You have to go to this link first. Then you will get the sign, up, sign in pop up over here on the right hand side. You have to sign in through that. You have to create one account. Okay, so then if you don't have the account, you have to create the new one in Microsoft Learn. So you get the achievement profile like this where you can add your achievement for that i have provided one link with that steps you, you just have to click that link in a new tab so you can achieve the badge for pl 200 once you redeem that badge the badge will get added to your profile like this you can see over here the batch will get added to your profile. And if you get any error. While doing the steps, you can uh, put put it in the chat box. So you can ask for the new link so I can share with with you all the new link. As you can see, the code has hit it maximum. If it's uh, the link get hits uh, maximum, the, the link don't open up sometimes. So you can ask for the new link. That's all. Also, I have mentioned the uh, steps same in the chat box, so you can follow accordingly. Thank you. Uh, Komal ma'am, you can go ahead with the session now. Thanks to all. Thank you, Chaitanya. Okay, so I will be sharing my screen.
Okay, I'm back to my solution, my power up portal. Okay, so first I will start how we can create an environment. Okay, so as I said, we have a default environment ready with us to all the users. But if we have to create an environment like for the specific need, like for the trial environment or the sandbox environment or production environment, so we need to create the environment for the same. For that, you need to click on that setting icon, this gear icon. Right now, I'm in Power App Portal. Under setting, you will get the option for admin center. Now, when you are Power App admin uh, administrator or if you are an environment maker role, then only you can create the environment. So then you will be jumped to Power Platform Admin Center. Okay, so here you will get option for environment at the top left hand side. Under environment, whatever the environments are already there in your account. So right now, if you will notice, I'm having a default one and a trial account, uh, sorry, trial environment. So if already you have a trial environment, you cannot create a new one. So right now already I'm having a trial environment, so I cannot create a new environment. So what I will be doing, I will uh, just delete this environment. And try to create a new one. Need to refresh. So if you are deleting any uh, environment, you can recover that uh, environment if you want, but like it is only available for seven days to recover. After that, it will not be available. Uh, Okay, so I'm just going to create a new one because it is giving me message that it is deleted. Okay, so let's try. So when you are going to create a new one, just click on new here. You need to enter the name. For example, I'm writing TR 200. Now here it will ask you the region. Just define the region like right now I'm in India, so I'm selecting India. Then what type of environment like here you have the option for sandbox, for production, for trial and the trial subscription base we are not going to use. Like if you have subscription, you can uh, have the option to create two trial environment. But right now by default, we have the option to create one trial uh, environment only. So. I'm going to select trial. If you want, you can write the purpose why you are creating this environment. Now here it is asking, do you want to create a database for this environment? So click yes. And click on next. Now here you have option for pay as you go with Azure. Like if you want to go with pay per use basis, so you can keep on this, uh, keep this option on. And click on next. Your English, I will just keep it uh, default. 
currency i will make a default if you want to enable dynamic 365 app you can enable it but in trial account this option is disabled here you want to deploy sample apps and data so you just need to click on yes it is done if you want to add any security group you can select that security group okay i am not just right now adding any security group here it is done and i am going to click on save okay so now you will notice my previous trial account is deleted and now new environment is created now you will notice the trial environment it is saying the trial the days are remaining 29 days okay as i said the limit for using trial environment is only one month after one month it will be automatically deleted so once the environment is ready you need to go back to your power app folder here just uh, click on environment uh it is not i just need to refresh it now here just at the top you need to select the environment click on the environment uh okay it should show me my another environment okay it's not refreshed i think okay okay the state is ready should be there Okay, let me just refresh it again. Why am I not getting the option? Okay, I will try to log in again. Oh, this is something weird. I do not know why I am not getting my environment ready. showing me the ready state
Okay, I do not know why it is taking time. So once you create the environment here, it will be listed here. Like it will give you the option to select that environment. I do not know why it's taking time. Okay, no worries. It may be taking time to be reflected here. But once your environment is added here and it's the real is the stage is ready, then you can see that environment here and you will get the option to select that environment. So once that environment is available here and you will be entered in that environment. So we will just wait. No problem uh, till the time we will be covering other topics. This is why like once you have created your environment like this. Now next task is to create a solution. Like for example, you are in your new created environment or it, it is a sandbox environment or whatever. You will get these options by default. OK, so now here you need to create a solution like here. Click on the solution. And here we will go to new solution. Here you just give the name to your solution. Like here, I'm giving here 200. Good. This is the display name I have given to my solution. By default, it will take the name of the solution. Now, publisher. Now, what is publisher? See. When you are going to create any object, any table, any uh, business rule, business process rule, every time we are going to publish it. OK, so when you are going to publish our object, it will take an initial. Right, so it will take a publisher name. So here you will notice by default, this is the CDS publisher. This is common data service default publisher that is CR. If you have to create your own publisher, like like my name is Komal Sharma. OK, I want to publish all the objects with my publisher name. Like so I will be using KS. So KS will be the initial. So whatever the object will be created by me, it will take the initial KS. OK, so same way you can create your custom publisher. So for that, you can do one thing. Here, just click on new publisher. Display name. For example, I am making for year 200. Okay. And display name PR 200. Then prefix I will use PL2. This PR2. This is my prefix. So whatever the object will be created, there will be the prefix added PL2. And here you will see preview that is PL2 and your object name. Once it is done, click on save. Done. Now here your publishing publisher will be ready. So here you will notice this is PL200. I have selected this publisher that I have just created. This is the default version that is created for the solution. Once it is done, click on create. Guys, if anyone have any doubt, any queries, keep on typing in that uh, chat box. So Rahul, you have a question about deleted environment. What question you have? Okay, I will unmute you. Yes, Rahul, you can unmute yourself now. Rahul, you wanted to have some, you wanted to ask something.
Uh, I think Rahul is not there. Rahul, if you want, you can ask your question. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, I'm going back to my portal. Okay, so now here you will notice my solution is ready. Right now there are zero object. Uh, your mic is enabled. I have just enabled your mic. Pradeep, uh, if you want to ask something, I will allow you to ask. I have allowed your mic. Is my screen not shared? Is it visible now? I hope when I was creating the solution, you all were able to see that. Okay, okay. In between, it was stopped. Uh, hi, hello. Yeah, Rahul. Uh, so about questions about deleted environment, you said once a environment is deleted, it can be retrieved within seven days. Right. So if by just in because seven days, I think is a very less time. So by, uh, in case it's over seven days, is there any other way to that? Microsoft can you know get it back for us or is there any way or that is my question. Uh, see here the available option is only seven days. You can recover that deleted environment within that seven days. After that it cannot be recovered. OK, but later on you can raise a ticket to Microsoft and maybe they can help you out. OK, OK, thank you. OK. Anyone else? Any question? Any question? So I'm going back to my portal. So now here you will notice my solution is ready. That is PL 200 project. And here right now I do not have any object, but as soon as I will be creating new objects, it will show me the number of those objects that will be created. And those objects will be having the initial or the prefix uh, that we have just created. I'm just going back. Now, coming to the security point of view, like if you have any security role to be assigned. So for that, you need to go to your Power App Admin Center. Like right now, I am just going to this default admin center, default environment. Now here you will notice in this default environment. Or whatever the environment you will be creating, you will get the same information, same properties. Here I will be using I will be uh, clicking on this option. See all that is for security role. Just click on it. Now here you have some default roles that can be assigned to the users. Like every uh, role is having a specific persons to be served. Purpose to be served that is like board contributor. Some is for Power BI. Like if you will scroll down here, you have the role for system administrator and system customizer. Like as I said, when you are having a trial environment and you want user to explore that environment, so so here you can have the trial environment and you can give user a system customizer role, so they would be able to explore this environment they would be able to use the custom added entities they would be able to create entities or any default entities can be used but if you have to create a custom role so for that 
can go and click on new role. Okay, so now here you have the window to create a new security rule. Just give the name to your security rule. Like for example, I'm using it for peer 200 rule. Okay, this is the name I have given. Here you will notice it will show you the business unit. This unit you are going to create this rule. So this is the default business unit. As I said, in every organization, they have the default business unit. But as per your requirement, you can create more business units and this will be the parent business unit. So I'm just using the default one only. Now here, once it is ready, I have given the role name. Now here, this role, whether you want it for Code records, these are the code records. This is for the services, sales, business management. But right now I'm just going to quickly move on to custom entities. Like basically, when we are going to create our custom entities, we need to define the role for the same. So here I have a custom entity. Uh, I just need to search for the same. Yeah, so here you will notice I have a table that is employee table. This is the custom uh, table that is there in this environment. OK, so for this one, this table, if I will scroll. These all are the roles create, read, write, delete. So for this particular custom table, which role you want to activate and what should be the key? Whether you wanted a user particular for a business unit level for a parent or you can say the child business unit or organization level. So here I am making it for organization. So if I will click one. Yeah, I think this is for. Yeah, this is for create, read and write. So I am making it for create. No, no, create is already done. So I will. I'll just scroll down. This is employee. I'm not doing anything here. So when I'm keeping it blank, if you will notice there is a key. If it is blank, means none selected, no role is there. So here I'm not giving any creating role. This is for user. So like if I will click here one time, only one time I click, this is for user level. Okay. If I will click one more time, this is business unit. Third time, it is parent business unit, parent or child business unit. Organization means if it is fully green, it is for organization level. Same I will be doing for read, write and delete. So that is done. I have given for this table read, write and delete. It is done. Click on save and close. So here if you will notice I have this role ready. Year 200. Just click on this role. Now here you will get the option to add people to this particular role. On this option, add people. Give the name like I have few demo employees. I will just add it. Okay. 
it is done. Now I'm going back to my environment. This is how we have just uh, completed a first lab where we have created an environment. Second, we have created a solution. In that solution, we have created a publisher. So whatever the new objects will be created in the solution, it will be created with the prefix of with a publisher. And then we have created custom roles and we have done the activity how we can assign this custom role to a user. Anyone, any question, any doubt about the same? Anyone, you can raise your hand. Okay, no one. Okay, so now we will be covering this part where we will be exploring data world. So when I will click on data world, here we have table. So here I have different default tables. And there are a few custom table too. So here. I will just use a filter EOB notice I have just customized uh, a, a, I have just created a publisher that was with EOB. So whatever the object was created with EOB are displayed here and these all are the custom table. OK, like for example, I have this PL 100 employee onboarding process. Then we have the designation. Then we have the employee onboarding flow. These all are the custom tables available in my environment. If you have to create a new table, look, so I will be doing one thing. I will be going to my solution. And I will click on my solution. Just click on table. And I click on new. And table. So let's create a table like for example, I'm making it for PL 200. ENP table. be name. So this is the first and the by default the first one is the primary column and save. OK, so at least one column should be the primary column. And that primary column is used to uniquely identify the value of your tables. Generally here I have taken name EMP name, but uh, in the real environment generally you need to keep the field which is having unique value like for example registration number, employee number or student number. So that are the unique uh, numbers. So that field you can use as a, as a primary column. So now my this table is ready. I need to create a column. So for that. If you will notice I have the schema under the schema. I have columns. Just click on the columns. So 
here you will notice this employee name. This is the primary name. This is the field that was created while creating the table. It's time to create more columns. You will notice here we have some default columns. These default columns are there to help you out to directly use it in your table. But if you want to have the custom columns, you can create that. So I will be creating a new custom column. So this example I am taking for um, email. Email ID. So for that, the data type I will be using email. That is done and save. I hope this column. Yeah, so this is done. Now you will notice my new. With the publisher name, the prefix PL2. OK, this is how we are going to create the object with our publisher name. One more column I will be creating that is employee type. EMP type. And this time I'm going to use choice. So for that, yeah. So here when you will click on choice, it will ask you yes or no or choice. I will not going to. No, I will use it choice. Now when you will use choice, it will give you the option to synchronize with choice. So if already any choice is created here, so you can choose that. Like here already one choices is created that is employee type. So I am going to use it employee type here. You have two options full time and contract. Now, for example, this is not created. It is not already created like I have already created an employee type in my previous session. So it is. But if you have to create a new choice, just click on new. Give the name like PR 200. EMP. Give the name label like. Full type full time. And one more that is. Choice is done. Click on save. So I will use the choice. It will be listed here also. PL 200 employee type. It is selected and click on save. We have created three custom tables that is employee name, employee type and employee ID. So this is how you can create multiple columns with multiple data types as per your requirement. So now you will notice as I have just created three objects, one table, sorry, two objects, one table and one choices. So here overall object, it is showing me two in my solution, one choice and one table. So now I will be going back to my table.
So for example, my table is ready. We can start building app or model app with our table itself. Okay. So for that, now if I will go back to this table. So this is the metadata for my table. Where you can see the schema, the column, relationship, keys and all. And this is the data experience. So here as I discussed, whenever you are going to use any table for your model driven app, you need to design the form and design the view. OK, if you will notice right now when I'm going to click on forms. There are three forms. One is main cart and quick view, so we will be using main. So when you said model driven app takes the data first approach. So when you are dealing with data via app, so you need two screens. One where you are going to put the data and second where you are going to view your data, right? So here basically this form, this form is for where you are going to have the data entry. OK, where the user is going to put the data. So when you will notice here by default, this is the default form. Where you have nothing like it is only employee name, employee name and owner name. So I do not need owner name basically here. So this is the time you can start. Creating a form or you can customize the form in your own way. So how you can do that? As I said, you can design the header, footer or the body of the form. So for that, what we can do if I do not need owner, I will be just putting it at the top. And now here you will notice I have the filter option. I will use it custom. So here I have email ID and type. I will simply just click on it. And it will be added here. See how easy it is. Just click on it. It will be added. So right now these three fields are added to my form. So whenever I put this table to my model driven app, my form will be ready. OK, now once your form is ready, you need to save it. And you need to publish. it. Once it is done, it is saved, it is published. We can go back. Now our form is ready. Form is what? As I said, where we are going to have the data entry. Now we need to design the view that how our end user can visualize the data. So for that, we can customize the view of our table. So I will go back to my table. And this time I will go to view. Now here we have public view active. We have lookup view, advanced view. So here we are going to use active view. Just click on it. This is what the default view of our table. OK, so now this is the time you can customize the view so for that. Just keep on dragging uh, all the fields of your table. So right now I am having. 
plot created on. So I do not need this column. I will just simply remove it. I need to put my custom fields. I will just filter it out. I have to. I will just simply click it on and it will be dropped to my view. OK, so my table is ready. My form is ready and my view is ready. That is done. Now it's time to create the model driven app, our first app. Don't forget to save it. And publish it. Once it is done, go back. Right now I'm in my solution. So I will go to apps. And we'll build our first app that is model driven app. Ah, uh, yes, Sripati, when you import a file with data into data data was it automatically create a table with the columns and rows of the data. The new solution, the entire table, the structure, the metadata or the rows, it will be imported. OK, uh, I, I had another question, uh, Komal. Mm -hmm. um, in the in the previous steps, uh, you know, you have created a table and then added um, a few columns uh, into the table, uh, but we have not uh, put in any data yet. Uh, and now mm -hmm. we are uh, in the process of creating a model driven app. Uh, so um, mm -hmm. so would the would the data uh, be um, entered in the subsequent steps uh, to visualize the data from the data was into your model driven app. I mean, when will the data uh, be inserted into the table? OK, so Shripati answer to your question. See, it's up to you. You have mm -hmm. choice. Like okay. if you want to directly enter your data in data was table, you mm -hmm. can. OK, I will be showing you how you can do that. OK, or mm -hmm. better you deal with your data via app. OK, okay? Mm -hmm. so like you have another option like when we will be creating model driven app, mm -hmm. you can directly put in data via that app only. Oh, OK, that means it's like a form and you will enter your data in the form. Correct. And the data actually gets saved in the data was table. Correct, correct. Okay. So as we have just created a form and view of the table, the same form and view will be used for our model driven app. Oh, OK, OK. Mm -hmm. OK. So we basically your event driven apps are meant for um, these kind of uh, operations, you know, where you have uh, you have an you have an insertion, you have a deletion, you have an updation kind of forms forms based. You use right. the event driven apps. Correct. It's it's so. not event. I will mm -hmm. correct you. It is a model driven model app. driven app, right? Right. Model right. Driven because app. we yeah. are having a data model, okay, correct. and we are correct. using it for our app. So basically the main purpose of choosing model driven app is what it's a data first approach where you are dealing right. with data models. Right. You are processing your data. OK, OK. So directly interacting user with the data was making it more secure and making the limited access to your data via app. So whatever the data you will put or whatever the field you will put in the form and view. Same will be visualized and accessed by end user. No, oh, okay, got it. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So now, here, uh, okay, I will show you first before creating app that directly if you have to enter data in table, how you can do that. So I will just go back to my table.
Now here just scroll down. Now here this is what the raw structure where you have all the default and the custom uh, fields here. So what you can do, you can just simply edit it. OK, so right now we are in table, so directly we are accessing table. Just click on this down arrow here and only click those fields. The custom fields that you want to use for entering the data. So I am having only three employee ID, employee name and employee type and save. So if you want to change the positions, you can do. So I have put employee name. So employee name that is like I will use my name. Then email ID, like for example. And employee type as it's a choice, I should get the choice. I have two choice full time or part time. I will use full time. It's done. Data is automatically saved. Here you will notice data saved. And I will go back. So I have just entered one row, one data in my table. So this is how I'm directly accessing my data words table. Okay. Yeah, you will scroll down. I have so here one record is added. OK, so this is how we have added one record directly to the table. Now we will be creating app. And we will be trying accessing this uh, data. We can view that data via app or we can enter new records. So I will be. Click on new. Now here you will get option to create canvas app or model driven app. I will click on model driven app. I will just keep the name APL 200 EMP onboarding. Create. So now you will notice my app is here. I just need to add a page. OK. I will just click on add page. Now here it is asking me you want to add page, which is table base. Table base means we are going to add a table and directly data will be getting from that table. Or do you want to have a dashboard page? based which is based on view and form i will click on next so here i just need to type the table so i will use pl okay. this is my table pl 200 employee table i will just select it and add So here you will notice the time I have just selected that table. It is automatically showing me my view and form. Let's just play it so that we can have a better idea. OK, 
Okay, so before play, actually, we need to save and publish it. So it is automatically publishing and saving my app. Okay, so now here you will notice within few seconds, just based on the table, my model driven app is ready. You can notice I have the default. Uh, this is a demo data that I have entered directly in the table. I can view my data. If I have to enter new data, just new click on new. Earlier we were having view and now this is getting we are getting form. So this is the form we have designed. So I will just put new name. Yes. One. ID. And employee type. That's done. It is done and click on save and close. Now I have all two records. This was entered via directly in a table and was entered via app. And the same, it is saved in my dataverse table. So this is how you can uh, create a model driven app which is based on a data wars table. Anyone any doubt? Any question when you put a file? Yes, uh, yes, Shripati, when you import a file, like for example, you have a so automatically the column and the rows will be imported here. Yeah. What are the what are the typical use cases of a model driven app common? One or two examples where model driven mm -hmm. apps are preferred over the canvas apps. Right. See, for example, uh, as I have taken one example that was employee onboarding yeah. process of your organization. Or if you have uh, like any 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 product, okay, mm -hmm. like any product processing process, like a manufacturing process when the product was uh, uh, like raw material was taken, and then how, what is the next process stage of that product and all, mm -hmm. or the product delivery, okay, like most of the organization they are involved in the product delivery, okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the delivery stage? Uh, accordingly, you can make that uh, model driven app and the each process will be handled. So these are the few examples you can take for model driven. Basically, this is for where you are mainly dealing with data or I must say. Process apps that are involved uh, with the same data, like here, if you are using that, for example, product delivery. OK, so first stage when the order has arrived, which was done by a customer. So when a customer has put an order, then second stage, it is uh, the request is uh, is sent to the person who is handling that order. OK, so he will take care. What is the delivery date? Who will be the delivery person and all? And then third, it will be going to the packaging stage mm -hmm. where the person who is handling the packaging process, he is handling his data. And then next stage, this is for the delivery. Dispatch person. Who's actually going to deliver that project uh, mm -hmm. product. He will enter his detail that yes, it is delivered on so and so date, so and so time, and the signature of the and customer will be taken. And again, the last stage is the customer feedback. He will give the feedback whether he has received the product on time, it was in a good state and all. And then finally, the process will be completed with the feedback of the customer. 
okay i hope sure. you got it yeah got it and now when we are talking about the canvas app now as you will notice the model driven app we have just created it is more on data approach we are we are having the view of the data on the process here we are not looking much on the low to go for the uh, main the ui interface like for example the same customer when he is going to place the order so for that user need a screen where you can have some colors you know the buttons labels of the product that he is going to purchase the images for the same and uh, then he is going to have a um, payment option then for payment again he is clicking on the button he is going to another screen and all or he is having a login cases you want to give a good look and feel to you end user we are we are not much concern about the data part data will be handled in the background right but on the look and feel basis user is like okay this is the look and feel it is making process easy to the end user to use that app okay Okay, so wherever uh, end user, wherever end user is interacting uh, uh, and which has to be visually appealing, that's where you go for Canvas apps. Right. For your HR department, they are having a uh, leave request. They are handling mm -hmm. leave request. Okay. Now, for example, your all employee, all employees of the organization, they have to put the leave request. so for that leave request how they are going to do that are they going to mail to hr employees and all every time and when they are going to mail hr employees are fetching the data from the email saving it somewhere else in the excel file and all and maintaining that file is really big headache better create an app a simple app where you just put some uh, label and text field where just enter the employee name your email id your manager name manager email id number of leaves types of leave and a button mm. so you will, will user will enter his detail mm. he will click on the button mm. automatically the request will be sent to hr manager and one copy will be sent to his immediate manager got it yeah, yeah, so for yeah, this purpose it. you can create the canvas app mm. Yeah. Any other question? Why only active view was chosen? Okay, so Shri Devi ji, uh, when we are using the view, this is view is actually what what end user is going to have. Okay, how to visualize the data? So active view always show the active stage. That's why we. you active view for visualization of the data as the name is active so this is always in active state immediately the data will be updated and it will be visualized as you have just noticed i have just enter a new record and when you have gone to the view your data was there in that active i hope i have given you the answer Uh, really? Yes, Komal. Thank you. Yeah, yes, Komal. Thank you. And when will the other views be used? Use the other views. So there are other okay. views that are automatically created, right? Yes, we have different views for the different purposes. Like for your uh, lookup view, like if you have to look up for the value. So every view or the quick view, like immediately if you have to have any particular. or entry or the particular data so for that you have the quick view okay okay so uh, as of as per my understanding is that uh, so if you want to modify we always modify it in the active view so that can be reflected Correct. on the app so if we want yes. to modify the other views like uh, can it be also be viewed on the app can yes, we depends on your need Yes, okay. if you can want, can that be you a can link a link to the app? Like we have to select that particular view. Yes, yes, but it is okay. always recommended when you are actually using your model driven app, you have to go with the main view and the active view, main form and active view. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. 
Any other question? Okay. So I think it should time we, we, we should go back to our solution and we should uh, have a little bit labs related with the canvas app so that you will be having understanding how we can create a canvas app. So I'm just going back to my portal. Okay, so here I will just go back. And here I will be click on create. Okay, so now when you're going to create an app. So here you have option directly a bank app. So when you will click on blank app. You will get the option to create a blank and canvas app based on data words or based on blank website. So all the options you can explore. You can directly create app via data words or from SharePoint list or from Excel or SQL. But if you will scroll down here, you will notice we have some templates to start with. OK, like right now you are totally new to this portal. You really do not know from where to start creating your app. Better go and explore our template. You can if this meets your requirement or criteria, you can use these apps too. Like here you will notice this is a help desk uh, app. Uh, if you need to create an app like as a help desk. Uh, for your employees or for your customers, you can use this. I have one more app. Uh, this is the cost estimator like any app uh, you want to estimate a cost for your product as per the uh, quantity and all. So you can explore this app, but this is the template. Basically, this is for the flooring. Basically, like if you have to uh, purchase the flooring type and you have to create a flooring of your house, any particular room. So you can just have give the area of your room or uh, you can have select the particular types of the tiles and all and accordingly it will calculate the cost for you. So I will be just showing you how you can start with the same. Here you can rename this app like if I will put in PR 200. Demo app. Click on create. Okay. So here, if you will notice directly, I have access this template. And I will just click on play. So this is some data which is already there in the table. Okay. And if I have to go in the detail, just click on this arrow. Here I have the detail for the same. I will begin estimate. Give the room name like for example, if it is for uh, bedroom. The length for the same. Is 15 by. 
in and select the flooring style. So for example, I'm selecting this one. And a review. So this is the total cost. It has estimated the cost. If you have to submit it, you can click on submit. So this is how you can start using this template. Now, if you have to customize it, you can customize. Now, if you will notice when I have used this template, there are some default screen that was added. Like this is for filter page, job detail page, and every screen is having different information. This is the preview image. This is the finish estimate page, view image, confirmation page. So these all are navigated with each other. Now, for example, if you have to customize it, so for that, if you will notice at the right side, I had the property. So whatever the objects are there on the screen, it is having the property for the same. Like here, I have selected this group. This is what group. And here I have the display mode. It is edit. So if it if user wants to edit it, user can. If you want to make it only in a view state, user cannot edit the detail for the same. Now, if I have to enter the data card, any detail and all that you can enter. Like, for example. Um, yeah, so right now I have selected this gallery. This is actually the gallery view of my data. And here I have fields like, for example, if you have to edit the field. Just for a minute. Here I am having the field. So from whatever the data source it is having, there are some fields. Right now, it is taking only four fields. That is text, job name, address, and this text. So for example, if I have to change the web, in place of this date, I want to put email. I will use this email. And here. That's it. So I have edited it. Now it is showing me email ID and the contact name. I will just play it. Here you can notice this is change. Similarly, you can change any of the property. You can just customize totally in your own way. Like for example, if you want to change the text or the background color, whatever you can change. Like right now, if the border color or the color is So this is how you can just change the property as per your like. And you can just explore the properties and just customize it in your way, whatever the way you want to use it. So this is right now we have just used a. Once it is done, the save and it is ready to be used. Now, for example, if you want to start from scratch, so for that, I will be using new app. 
click on don't save. Right now, I'm just going to click a blank app and canvas. Click on create. I will give a name that is uh, CM200. Demo app. And here it is asking you the format, like when you are going to start with app, the format you want it for a phone or for a tablet. So I'm just making it for tablet. The template we have used that was with a phone view. Or phone format. Okay, so now you will notice when I just started, it is only having one screen. This is the default screen. If you want to add more, click on adding more screen. So like for example, I'm adding one more screen. So here you will notice I have different type of screens I can add. Right now I'm just adding blank. So screen two, uh, I'm just using a uh, label that is text label and here I will put a text Login successful font size, it would be 20. Can make it more big. And screen one, for example, I'm inserting a button. And here I'm just changing the property text that is login. So when I'm clicking on this button, I should be jump to another screen. So for that, whatever the object you will click here, it is having some property. Okay. Now on what property? Like here I am having on select. So when there is a select, when a user is going to click on that, what should be done? So what action should be done? So for that, I have this formula bar. If you guys have worked with Excel, you must be have familiar with a formula bar where we will be using some functions and all. So here I will put the function navigate. If you remember, we have discussed the navigate function. It is asking me where you want to navigate. I will use screen. And that's it. So let's just test it. So by clicking on that button, I have jumped to another screen. Here you have different other options, other objects that you can insert on your screen. You can insert text label. You have text input if you want to take an input. Any, uh, if you have to add any chart, any shape. And here you have the AI builder capabilities too. Like here you have business card reader, form processor, object detector and all that you all can add on your app directly. Like I will just show you one more example. Uh, this is for. Like I am using. This is the slider control you must. 
the slider like uh, generally for rating purpose we use the slider like uh, if you have to give the rating from 1 to 100 or 1 to 10 then in that case you can use the slider so i'm just using this slider and i will be creating a app quickly So right now I'm having three sliders here on this screen and I will be controlling the color of this screen. This slider value. So for that I will be just giving a background color to this screen that will be okay. Any color I'm just putting for example this color. Okay. And if you will notice, I have three slider, slider one, slider one, dot one, and slider one, dot two. So here, if you will notice, each slider's property, this is a min and max value. Okay. Notice the background color as I have taken the background color of this screen, it is having some RGBA color. RGBA is what? That is red, green and blue. OK, so any color is a combination of red, green, blue for proportion here. So here, if I will take this color, it is having RGBA. Red is 0, G is 16 and blue is 96. So better using this slider value for controlling the background. Uh, if you remember, I think uh, for color, maximum value is two. Uh, two fifty six. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was not getting that. That is two fifty six. So I will be using. I think it's not 256, it is 255. Yeah, I think 255, yeah. 55. So I will make it the maximum value, 255. As the color value, the maximum is 255. Yeah, so that is done. Now, here I will be changing the RGB value here. In place of zero, make it slider one slider one dot value or g for green i will take slider one dot one dot value and for blue in place of 96 slider one two dot value that's it let's just play it i hope it should work yeah. so here i'm increasing the red green and blue so here i can make the combination of any colors of this background by using this slider So similarly, you can just explore different other uh, components, different other objects of this app. Uh, I just quickly wanted to show you some apps that I have already created in my environment. One I wanted to show you with that uh, business card reader. Uh,
So here you will notice uh, in this app, I have this editor screen. So here you will notice I have added business card reader. This is AI builder. And this AI builder is a already trained model. And whenever you are going to scan any business card, it is going to fetch the value from this card. Like for example, if I'm going to scan it. <coughs> sorry. Yeah. So here you will notice uh, this is a business card I have uploaded and automatically it has taken the first name, last name, email and the address and whatever the information you want to take. It is has taken just click on OK and it will be saved in your database. Done. My screen is freeze. I do not know what happened. Yeah, so this is not new record. I think I have already added this card word earlier, but right now this is the new entry that is done in this record uh, with the name Helena. It was taken from the business card that I have uploaded. Right now I'm having only one sample for the business card, uh, but you can explore this business card reader and you can keep on adding more business card and data will be saved automatically in your table. So this was done. I think it's time uh, already. We are uh, about to four. <laughs> uh, the time is over. I'm done with this session. So I think I should quickly send you some uh, important links that will help you to study PL 200 course. So and we'll give you some tips so that you can just prepare for PL 200 exams. Will there be any hands on? Uh, 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 I mean, will the certification itself material uh, of PR 200? You will be getting the same. I think all the PPTs that I'm using. Yes. No, my 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 question was about the certification exam. Will it uh, only have a, a objective uh, type or multiple choice, multiple select? Or will there be some hands on also? You will you need to do some labs or something during the exam or no? They will give you some scenario. No, no, no. There will, will be no hands on. Answer. There okay. will be only MCQs. Oh, OK, yes, yes. And you may have some case studies too. Like on mm -hmm. the basis of that case studies, you have to appear the question. OK, OK. So this is a real uh, 200 course where all the modules are there. You we have discussed during our session today, so you can just explore and after the end of every uh, module, there are some sample questions too that will be helping you to prepare for the exam.
because of the time limitation i couldn't go to the deep drive of the course but if you want to uh, go to the deep dive and you really wants to uh, do the hands on on the spl 200 session you can register yourself and you will be given the full hands on that will be four day course for the spl 200 where we will be covering all modules and all the labs related with each modules helpful like before paying for the exam i recommend you to uh, complete this course and after completion of this course you will get a badge i think the same process chaitali uh, will be was explaining you that complete the course on a badge it would help you to prepare for the pl 200 uh, exam course any other questions query you have you can put it in the chat box or unmute yourself Yes, anyone. Okay, I think nobody is having any doubt. Chaitali, I just want to hand over it to you if you have to discuss anything with the attendees. Thank you, Sripati, for the feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session. You all were very nice, uh, good audience to me. And you all were interacting with me. Just keep on uh, questioning with me. That was really like I felt that really you were taking interest in the session. Thank you. I hope I could you uh, could give you the understanding of PR two hundred course and could give you the overview of Microsoft Power Platform. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you, much. Rahul. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah. So all the best everyone for the exam and have a nice weekend. Yes, Samyak, uh, please discuss your doubt. So make your voice is too low. Can you please uh, be a little louder? Yes, it's fine now. It's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, better. So what was like uh, we are using the power out of it. So there are certain it's like we have to write some some sort of an expression in that. Some some expressions. Yeah. Uh, so sorry, Samyak, I'm not able to understand. Some background news is coming I, from your side. So should I share? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Please, please type. Please type in the chat box if possible. Sure. sure.
Okay, so you are asking when I'm using Power Automate, I'm making an instant trigger flow, and in that we have to write expression as well. Okay. So you wanted to know what is expressions? Samak, what is your okay? So okay, so when you are creating a flow, you will be getting two options. One are some uh, dynamic value and expression, right? So I hope you know the dynamic content. Dynamic content is what that is taken dynamically while running a show. Every time it will be taking a uh, dynamic value, right? But same side expressions. Expressions are actually the pre-built formulas, like in Excel or in Power Automate or sorry Power App. We have the function bar, okay? So we have some pre-built formulas that we are using. Like for example, add some min, max, average, and all. Okay. Similarly, here while creating Power Automate, when you have to apply any pre-built functions like uh, date, okay, current date. So while creating the Power Automate, if you have to put the current date formula, it will pick your current date. Similarly, it will have it will be adding numbers or average of the number. Or if you have to define a variable, so you will define that variable under that expression, and you can use it as a dynamic content while creating the automation. I hope I could give you the understanding for the same, Samir. Uh, so Komal, like my, my question was like, like how can we learn more about the expressions and sort of things? So okay. If we, uh, if we have to learn more about the expressions, so is there okay, any particular okay. documents yeah. or some sort of links? Or yes, if, yes, if yes. Yeah, I'm just trying to find out. I hope I am having the study link for the same. Uh, And Komal, apart from this, I have actually one more concern. Like, uh, basically, if I tell about myself, like I'm a, I'm more of a technical guy in in, in the Microsoft CRM. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for that purpose, if I if I have to get certified in the more technical base, uh, so what sh what certificate should I take as well? If you can refer me as well. Just give me a second. I'm just yeah, sharing sure, you sure. that link for that sure, expression. Sure. Just okay, give me sure. a second. I'm back to you. Sure. Um, yeah, I have a very good example. You give can me. just load it. I have shared the link for the same. There is some example also how to use that uh, expression. Hope this will be helpful. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, can you please repeat your question? Sorry, I couldn't hear yeah. that. So actually, I'm I'm more of a technical guy. Working uh, mm -hmm. working on the Microsoft CRM. I'm out of it. Yes, yes, uh, yes, Amit. Your so, voice is dropping in between, but but please, I will. Yeah. I'm just trying to listen you. Yeah. So like, if I have to get certified in the more in the more technical base, so what should I? Uh, what certificate should I take for that purpose? For Power Platform, you are that talking. No, like uh, I'm more like as for the technical guys. If you have to be, uh, if you have to get Microsoft certificates. Mm -hmm. So, but so like, uh, technical in means, uh, may I know your interest area? Like you are so, more interest toward the apps or the development part or the data part. Uh, I have more interest in the development part, like to write the codes in that part. Like okay. The coding, so, the coding stuff. Mm -hmm. So for that, Samek, I recommend you to go with PL400. 
Here, okay. PL 400 is more about concentrating on the development part where you will be working more with codes and all the coding. Okay. So as I said, this platform is of course a no code and low code platform where you can explore your coding capability or developing capability here and you can okay. work more or you can build complex solution for your organization. Right now there is you know, the too much demand for uh, especially for that power platform field. So if really you are interested towards the coding and developing part, this is really uh, best certification for you. The PL400, yes, right? PL400, right. Okay, and uh, uh, as a starting, you have like uh, you have shown some sort of uh, order like 900, 100, 200, and 400. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you have shown that. So if mm -hmm. all these certifications are be done, so uh, beyond this, what should we do? Like if all the certifications are being done. So it's not that PL 100, 200, 300, 400. You do not have to complete all the certification. These yes. all are the role based certification. Like as I said, fundamental PL 900. OK, Correct. Correct. once you are done. You can go with any role based certification. Like as I said, you are more interested toward the developing. You cannot, yeah. uh, it's not like you do not have to do 100, 200, 300, and then 400. No, directly okay. you can go with the PL 400. Okay. As PL 100 is especially for app makers who are yeah. more interested toward the, uh, not the developing part, but more on the UI part, okay. user experience. Okay, they are more about the designing and all, designing app. Okay. okay. That is PL 100. 200, okay. as we have just discussed, this is for the yeah. consultant. Right. As a consultant, you must be having at least good idea about this platform, right? Yeah. So that is 200. 300 is for who are more interested toward the data analysis part, data visualization part. Okay. For you, this is PL 400, okay? Correct. Right. Now, if you want to go to the next level, that is the expert level. That is PL 600. So PL 600, if you are working on this developing part of this power platform and you are really expert level, you have achieved that expert level, you have really good understanding, then to prove your capability, you can go for PL 600. It will prove that yes, now you are pro developer. Okay. OK, so the next path after PL 400 is PL 600. 600. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Anyone else any doubt? Or you can drop the call. Thank you.